Alright class, today we're going to be talking about topic 10-3 uh, using side side side, side angle side, and angle side angle to prove that triangles are congruent. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking what we learned in the last topic and writing these as formal proofs. <clears throat> so steps we should follow. The first thing is using the information that's given we want to label our picture. Uh, this will give us an idea of what we're working with and give us a direction that we need to go. Now your very first statement should be the very first given statement. And the reason is just simply that it was given to us. So it's always given because given. Then we're going to just keep on deducing information until a congruency is reached. Then we're going to grab the next given statement and repeat. So we're going to come back up here and go back down. Now, if we've used up all of our givens, we've, we've used them all, and we do not have at least three congruencies. Then we want to find uh, a reflexive side. We want to look for a reflexive angle. We want to look for uh, vertical angles. Uh, we just need to find what that third uh, congruency is. Now once we have these three congruencies, we're going to use either side, 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 angle, side, or angle, side, angle. All right, and this will be the uh, last statement. Uh, actually, uh, this should be the prove statement, which I'll show you here later. Now, I want you to know that prove is never a reason. Uh, this word prove should never actually show up in your proof. This is what's at the heading of your proof. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the first example so I can show you. See, these are our given statements, and this is the statement that we want to end up with. We know that this is going to be our last statement. And then we have our picture. So first off we want to label. We know that AD is congruent with AB. And we know that DC is congruent with BC. Notice that for the first one I use one tick mark and for the second I use two. Um, this way we can tell our different sides apart. Now we've got labeled, we're going to go ahead and go, we're going to use our first given statement. We know that AD is congruent to AB and the reason? Well they gave it to us, so this is given. Oh, I've, I've got a congruency, that means I can move on. Uh, we've used up this given. Let's go ahead and talk about the other one. Uh, DC congruent to BC. And the reason? Well, they gave it to us. So we're just going to write, hey, that's given. And we have our second congruency. We are done. Uh, now I need my third statement. Uh, I don't have another given statement. What that means is that I need to look for something that is shared. Well, AC, well, that's a shared side. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it with three. I'm going to say that AC, well, you can grow up to yourself, AC. And the reason for this is that term reflexive. Okay, so this is the reflexive property 
Uh, you think of like your reflection in a mirror, and it's basically the same. Uh, it's just got the X instead of the T. So we're talking reflexive property. And uh, well, I, I've got a congruency, I'm done, and I have one, two, three congruencies. I do my last statement, triangle A, D, C is congruent to triangle A, B, C. Now we need to come up with Y. Okay, y. Is it side, side, side? Is it side, angle, side? Or angle, side, angle? Well, I know three sides. So this is side, side, side. Well, that one wasn't very hard. Let's go ahead and move on. Starting with example number two. Well, um, we're told that AC bisects uh, DAB, so it cuts DAB in half. So that means that this half of the angle is the same as that half of the angle. And we have angle two and one are congruent. So I'm going to mark those with two because that's the second angle congruency that we've been given. And uh, I wrote everything down that I can figure out right now. So let's go and look at our statements. We're going to start with well, AC bisects angle DAB. And the reason is, well, you gave it to me. I, don't, I didn't have to think about that one. Well, we don't get to stop until we have a congruency statement. And I marked my congruency statement up here. I just need to put it in words down here. So uh, angle DAC, that would be this top one, you are congruent to angle uh, BAC. And the reason for that is this whole word bisector, we're going to call that definition of bisect. Okay, bisect means that we cut in half. We cut it in half and that gives us congruent sides. Moving on, we've got a congruency statement. We can jump to our second one. Angle one congruent to angle two. Well, you gave me that one. I don't have to think about it. And it's a congruency statement, so it means we can move on. Well, I've used the first one. I've used the second one. I need three. And here, I see a shared side. So AC is, of course, congruent to itself. This is that reflexive property. And now I've got three congruencies. I've got two angles and a side. And that side is included between the two angles. That's very important. So we know that uh, triangle ABC congruent to triangle ADC because of angle, side, angle. Now, very important that your angle be between the two sides. Moving on to example number three. Uh, well, we're told that C is the midpoint of BD. That means that this side and that side, they've got to be the same. And C is the midpoint of AE, which means that this one is the same as that one. And we're told to prove this triangle congruency statement. Well, let's go ahead and start with our first one. Our first one says that C is the midpoint of BD, that was, that was given to us. Didn't have to think about it. It's not a congruency statement though, so we need our congruency statement. When we said that, we marked it, that BC is congruent to CD. And uh, that word midpoint, well, 
that's our key word that tells us how we knew. We've got our congruency statement, we're done. <coughs> C is the midpoint of AE. All right, uh, well, we don't have to think about it. It was given to us. And again, uh, we use that our definition of a midpoint to say that AC is congruent to CE. Have our second congruency. <coughs> And it appears that we are running out of given statements. So I need to look for, um, well, there's no shared side this time. There's also no shared angle. But I have a pair of vertical angles here at C. So I know that angle B, C, A is congruent to ECD, angle ECD. Why? Because they are vertical angles. And vertical angles are congruent. And, uh, well, I know that the vertical, I've got one, two, three congruency statements. I've got an angle included between two sides, so side, angle, side. And our proven statement that triangle ABC congruent to triangle EDC. And moving on to our last example. Well, it tells us that HY is congruent with LY. They say that WH is parallel with LF. And we've got to prove why Y is congruent to fly. Well, start with our first congruency statement, where we said that HY is congruent to LY. We have to think about it. It was given. Hey, that's a congruency statement. We're done. All right, well, next. We know that WH is parallel to LF. Again, we were given it. We didn't have to think about it. Um, being parallel is nice, but it doesn't give me a congruency statement. So what I need to do is I need to figure out, well, how can I get congruency? Well, let's go ahead and extend our lines a little bit. And I've got a transversal here. Well, I see that this angle and this angle well, they are opposite sides of my transversal inside my parallel lines. So these are alternate interior angles. And we know that alternate interior angles are congruent. And so this would be angle H is congruent with angle L. Well, what do you know? I have another transversal cutting across my two parallel lines. And I've got this angle and this angle. They are also alternate interior, which means they are also congruent. And this is angle W and angle kind of hard to read, uh, but it still says angle F. <coughs> and I've got my three congruency statements. So I should be able to say that triangle Y is 
is congruent to triangle fly. I just need to figure out why. Well, I have uh, two angles. I've got this side. Well, angle, angle, side, that's actually not one of our uh, theorems. So I can't use this just yet. So let's go ahead and erase this. And let's think. Well, I've got a pair of vertical angles right here. Didn't notice them before. Notice them now. And so I can say that um, angle H, Y, W is congruent to angle F, Y, L because they are vertical angles. Now, I can say that triangle Y is congruent to triangle fly because I've got angle, side, angle. One angle, one hash, okay, one arc, one tick, three arcs, one arc, one tick, three arcs. So angle, side, angle. Now, what this means is that uh, finding that W and F were congruent really didn't matter. Didn't need this one. But it doesn't hurt to have extra steps in your proof. You just want to make sure that all of your reasons are correct. So, um, good luck on proofs. Uh, take your time. Uh, they can be difficult. But just keep on going. Good luck uh, on your assignment.